them as home and shelter for the perky house wren. Pole stump with a hole in it, purposely placed in the yard, is also home and shelter for a pet. Every season of the year brings new, exciting experiences to the Connecticut home of Bob and Lydia Gastel, which they've named Evergreen Sanctuary, a place for birds to drop into with safety and live and raise their families. Over a period of years, Bob and Lydia have created this remark of security for thousands of friends. All this just by providing shelter, water, and food for the birds while developing their hilltop home and garden. Pole boxes attract nesting bluebirds and tree swallows, while feeders attract many other birds. Bob Gastel, an industrial draftsman, designs his own feeders, drinking fountains, and nesting workshop in spare time to be properly placed later in the yard. Nearly every part of Evergreen Sanctuary is near dense cover. The birds can always find safety there. Chipping sparrows are among our tiniest birds. They winter from Virginia to Florida and move north in April to raise a family or two. Insect-eating red-eyed vireos arrive north in May after a winter as far away as South America. One can hear their robin-like song late into the summer. And here at the nest is America's best-liked lawn and garden bird, the robin. While the Baltimore Oriole, a bird of the high elm trees, usually weaves its hanging nest near the end of a branch. This baby flicker is on the lookout for a meal. Escape streets are a quick, safe retreat for any bird at sight of a pursuer. Nearby, a graceful catbird of the mockingbird family comes to the drinking fountain for the pause that refreshes. And a robin quickly follows for a cooling dip. It's thrilling to see the birds at close quarters, to watch their actions and behavior as when the towhee and cardinal feel thirsty at the same time. A few mockingbirds, those minstrels from the land of magnolia and moonlight, have moved to Connecticut to live. And they're called mockingbirds because they can imitate most anything from the squeak of a rusty hinge to a cat's mew. A male purple finch watches and waits. One of our most welcome native sparrows is the whitethroat with its soft, tinkling whistle. The goldfinch, this time for a bat. Well, birds aren't the only entertaining little friends that a sanctuary can give you. Chippy Chipmunk grew tame enough to take food from Lydia Gestell's hand. The nesting season is always enjoyable. Not infrequently, a baby bird outgrows its nest and falls out or is pushed out. This little robin is well cared for.
A red syrup cup feeder, which he made, hoping it would attract hummingbirds, one of Bob Gestell's most remarkable inventions. Making and assembling these feeders in his cellar workshop occupies many winter evenings. Red syrup cups are filled with diluted honey and hung where the customers can find them. In no time at all, a catbird arrives for a drink. also attracted to the hummingbird feeder. There are birds around you no matter where you are. In California, Indiana, Illinois, Georgia, Virginia, or Connecticut. And what pleasure. What fun to attract these birds and see them close up. All you need to attract birds to your yard or garden is to furnish food, water, and shelter. And time for the birds to hear about you. And our friend Chippy likes the hummingbird feeder, too. Chippy also likes the portable feed box when it's left on the ground. Sunflower seeds are his particular favorites. box Bob made has several compartments for different varieties of seeds, berries, suet, and other foods that appeal to birds of many kinds. Lydia puts them in the various feeders so there's plenty of food for all and no need for overcrowding. The saps are the rarer woodpecker, as you may hope to see at an attractive bird sanctuary. One reason why evergreen is so popular with birds is the care the Gestells have taken to find out just what foods all the different species prefer and to supply the right foods at the right season through the entire year, not just in winter. A dash of old rose as a male purple finch comes in again for a good look. Beef suet is tempting to the male downy woodpecker with his scarlet head patch. Beef suet is cold weather food attractive to chickadees, nuthatches, and several other winter birds. In summer, its place is taken by natural foods, such as insects. The male cowbird comes to the garden for his food. This time, it's a female downy on the suet stick. She lacks the red headdress her mate wears. Nuts, broken up and put in an old coconut shell that's hung on a limb or a wire, attract a nuthatch. Then again, peanut butter. Placed in one of Bob's special feeders, serves many kinds of birds. My, 
how the cat birds love peanut butter. One of the amazing things in the bird sanctuary is the chance it gives to watch the arrival and departure of the birds as they move north and south with the seasons. Each week in spring, there's a steady rise both in number and variety of birds. The peak comes in May, sometimes a dozen new species each day. Warblers, hummingbirds, grosbeaks, late flycatchers, and thrushes arrive then from the winter resorts thousands of miles away in the South American plains and jungles. What? Baby Flicker, back at its doorway, still on the waiting list. The friendly bluebirds aren't nearly as easy to attract to our gardens as most of our other native birds because they prefer open fields and pastures to trees and shrubbery. However, the gestels have succeeded in attracting springtime bluebirds by offering fresh berries, picked in the fall and kept in their freezer, awaiting the return of these birds that wear the sky on their backs. Among the plants that afford shelter for the birds is the viburnum, which flowers in the spring, adding beauty to the garden. It provides fruit berries in late summer, attracting a variety of birds in search of food. The high bush cranberry with its colorful fruit is an added attraction. And so is the dogwood. In early fall, some fruit-bearing plants are a welcome sight to migrating birds. Here, the mountain ash supplies fruit to a hungry roving band of cedar waxwings on their way south. Birds and plants are inseparable companions. To survive and grow, the baby chipping sparrow, like other young birds, eats its own weight of food every day. The blue jay is an all-year resident in many parts of the country. Many purple finches spend the winter at Evergreen Sanctuary. The female purple finch is brown and heavily striped. The male purple finch, for the first two years of his life, resembles the female in color, then changes to a deep rose red. Pine siskins cannot be depended upon to visit any place regularly. They may be abundant in a given area in one year and then not show up there again for three or four years. They wander about in an irregular way. That's why it's thrilling to find them settling down on the feeders for a few days or a few weeks. Less predictable than the siskins are the beautiful evening grosbeaks. Some winters, vast flocks of these birds come down into our northern states. They readily visit bird feeding stations to the delight of people who have never seen one of them before. At 
last. After waiting so patiently or impatiently, the baby flicker gets a welcome reward from its hearts. Wherever your yard or garden may be, you'll have many birds around if shelter, water, and food are provided. Young robins in the nest are sheltered from harm, and the hummingbird's nest, even more wonderfully protected by its small size and camouflage, can be closely watched when adequate shelter is provided. Water to drink is a vital necessity for this male cardinal and all other birds. Yes, the hummingbirds do like the hummingbird feeder. In fact, they love it. Food in the form of sugar syrup or diluted honey in this red cup will bring these tiny jeweled birds to your garden. Only when the sun catches the feathers of the male ruby-throated hummingbird at the right angle do they flash red. Each month brings new visitors and sees old ones departing as the mysterious command of the migratory impulse moves them north or south with a swing of the sun. But summer brings the most colorful birds, including the glittering ruby-throated hummingbird, the most shining little star of all. 